Well guys, we have an interesting stock to talk about here today, otherwise known as Del Taco Restaurants. It's a $7 in 77 cent stock. I wanna talk a little bit about this one today. It's an interesting indirect play, in my opinion, on kind of what's going on with the Beyond Meat movement that I'm gonna explain in this video, okay? Once again, $7.77 stock. Ticker symbol on this one is Taco. Like, is, that a, is there a cooler like ticker name than Taco? Like, that's gotta be the coolest, okay? No, this stock has been absolutely destroyed, absolutely destroyed for the past six months. You pull up a six month chart of the stock, it was like a $12 stock, if not a little more than $12. Once again, here today, it's a $7.77 stock here today, okay? You could get some tacos for cheaper than that, all right? And keep in mind, the market's been phenomenal for the past six months. Like, pull up a chart of the NASDAQ. It's been doing amazing. Like, pull up a six-month chart of the S&P 500, and you're gonna see unbelievable performance from the stock market and most stocks out there. Meanwhile, taco has just been a laggard. You look at that stock chart. It's just ugly man, $12 plus at $7 now. Uh, you know, pretty much every other stock has been doing phenomenal. And here we are with Del Taco. It's just been a rough stock. But as I always say to you guys, it's not necessarily about what's happened in the past when it comes to stocks. It's about what happens in the future and what happens with your money in the future. Whether a stock's gone up a ton or down a ton doesn't mean actually very much other than it's interesting to look at. All that matters is if you invest in the stock today, What's the return over the next three, five, seven years, okay? Now, if you don't know Del Taco, it's basically a restaurant chain. They serve things like tacos, burritos, burrito bowls, those sorts of items, as well as quesadillas, chips, all those sorts of things, okay? It's a very inexpensive place. Now, I like to go there for the Fiesta Pack. When I'm feeling like I've eaten a lot of food, and when I feel like, man, I don't wanna spend much money, I go for that Fiesta Pack, man. You get six tacos, you get six bean and cheese burritos. It's like, here in Las Vegas, it's like 10 bucks. Okay, I mean it's not every night. I like to go to Hell's Kitchen and drop like 300 something dollars there I can just tell you that okay. I'm not going to Hell's Kitchen all the time like that like, That's just not me like I need that $10 fiesta pack from Del Taco once in a while I'm not trying to blow a bag at Bellagio every night mm -hmm. Okay, the old Jeremy the 2009 Jeremy that was making like eight nine dollars work in the photo department at Walgreens would say Dude slow your roll go eat some Del Taco. You're like we're not trying to blow another three four hundred dollars on dinner Let's go spend ten dollars and get a whole bunch of burritos and tacos, okay? Now, I said to you guys, this is an interesting play kind of on Beyond Meat to a certain extent. And the reason is they have a partnership with Beyond Meat and basically they are serving Beyond Meat products, branded products in their restaurants already. And they're kind of like one of the first like restaurant chains to really jump on this whole movement of people trying to figure out like, like if they want like to go on like a vegan diet or maybe a meatless diet or maybe just, you know, supplement some of their meat products and eat some of these more like Beyond Meat type products, okay? And, and so, you know, Del Taco's kind of jumped on that bandwagon. They have tacos, and they have burritos, they have many different items on their menu now, and these items are branded Beyond Meat tacos and burritos. And that's how I really got the idea to even start thinking about this Del Taco as a possible investment, okay? Because you guys remember, I've done several videos in the past couple months on Beyond Meat, okay? I did a video called, Is Beyond Meat Stock Finally a Buy? That was when it fell to $77. Then I ended up buying Beyond Meat stock. I made a ton of money on it. I think I got like a $74 cost basis on the stock. And then the stock shot up to a hundred something. And I sold out and I made a very nice profit on that Beyond Meat stock. So it got me to think, okay, if this is a big trend that's going forward and Beyond Meat is kind of the ones kind of leading this whole force when it comes to people thinking about, I want a kind of a meat-based product, something that kind of tastes similar to like a ground beef or something like that, but I want it to be a vegan vegan product. Since Beyond Meat's kind of leading that trend, if you think about it, you know, uh, some of these players that are the early adopters could end up actually benefiting from something like this, okay? So if we know Del Taco, this is a restaurant chain, once again, that we talked about. They have about 580 restaurants across 14 states. Now they have their corporate stores and they also have franchise stores. And to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of this particular business model and a ton of restaurants do it. Actually, most restaurant chains do this, where essentially they'll have their corporate stores 
that are really like fully owned by the corporation. Then they'll have franchise stores that are kind of, they, they kind of own them, but they kind of don't. They can control quite a bit, but at the end of the day, the franchisee is who actually runs that store or that restaurant. So it's not my favorite business model. I actually like when they're all corporate owned, but when you're thinking about trying to grow your brand faster, grow more restaurants, like, you know, at the end of the day, franchisees kind of make sense in this whole scenario. So 580 restaurants, 14 states. They're definitely not a small restaurant chain, but at the same time, there's certainly no mega like restaurant chain that's all over the US and has like, you know, thousands of restaurants or something like that. There's, th there's still a small player if you're comparing them to the big guys, okay? Now, I wanna kind of start off with the negative. Let's talk about the negative first. And if we look at their balance sheet, you guys know I love a great balance sheet. And with Del Taco, you can't say this is a great balance sheet by any stretch of the imagination. The balance sheet is, you know, it's just okay. I mean, the balance sheet is just not that good. Let's be completely honest, okay? Cash and cash equivalents of about eight and a half billion dollars on this stock. They have a long-term debt of about $150 million. So, you know, right off the bat, as far as looking at the balance sheet, I'm not a fan. However, I do understand this sort of industry of, you know, having tons and tons of different restaurants. Naturally, it ends up progressing to end up having a lot of debt. And if you look at most restaurant chains, they almost all have significant amounts of debt on their balance sheets. It's an unfortunate thing that the sector is like that, but it's just the way it is in the restaurant industry. You almost look at every single restaurant related stock and most of them have, you know, $100 million plus in long-term debt. And some of them have several billion dollars of long-term debt on their balance sheets. And that's just, it just is what it is when it comes to the restaurant industry, okay? And then when it comes to these big players that have expanded their businesses dramatically, okay? Now, if we look at the latest quarter for Del Taco, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see system-wide comparables restaurant sales actually increased 1%. This is definitely something you want to see increasing. It is definitely worrisome if comp store sales go negative. That's something you never, ever wanna see, whether you're a restaurant or whether you're a physical retail store. That's just not a good look, okay? So company operated comparable restaurant sales increased 0.4%. Company operated comparable restaurant sales were comprised of an average check growth of 4.1%. So average check growth, meaning the, you know, what a customer spends in there on average has gone up 4.1% year over year. So that's very, very impressive, including modest menu mix growth, mostly offset by a transaction decline of 3.7% year over year. So ex let me explain that in the plainest term as possible. They don't have as many customers coming through the door, but the customers that are coming through the door are spending more money. And as a net net, it's still a positive in the end because comp store sales increased, okay, 1%, but it's definitely not a super strong number. A super strong number for something in the restaurant industry would be like a 3% to 6% type number as far as comp store sales go for restaurant sales, okay? Franchise comparable restaurant restaurant sales actually increased 1.8%. So the franchise actually outdid the company owned stores, which is surprising to me. And that's definitely a positive thing to see because usually I kind of expect, you know, the franchisees to be the laggers. So the fact that, you know, they're growing even faster than company owned stores, uh, definitely, you know, it shows that at least the franchisees at Del Taco kind of know what they're doing there, okay? Total revenue increased 2% to 120 million compared to 117 million in the fiscal third quarter of 2018. They did lose money in the latest quarter. Net loss was $7.7 .7 million, representing a loss of 21 cents a share. So they did lose money in the latest quarter. I kind of, you know, Ideally, if I'm investing in stock, I like to see the company, you know, be profitable all the quarters, unless it's some type of mega, mega growth company or something like that. Usually I like the company to be, you know, profitable every single quarter, quarter in and quarter out, okay? Now, if you're thinking about restaurants, it's not just about getting more out of your current restaurants, but it's kind of about like, like building new ones. You know, people move around, cities grow, cities shrink, so you gotta build more restaurants in new places, right? So as far as restaurant development goes, during the third quarter of 2019, 19. There were two company operated restaurant openings, two franchise restaurant openings, and one company operated restaurant closure, including two expected openings this week. This is them talking in the end of the quarter back in October, okay? There will be 15 Del Taco system restaurant openings so far this year, with another 12 restaurants currently under construction, of which 10 are expected to open in fiscal 2019. The company 
also opportunistically acquired a high volume franchise restaurant in Southern California during the fiscal third quarter of 2019. So this is a company that continues to build out restaurants in their different markets that they operate in. And you know, somebody that's looking at this as a possible investment, it's definitely a thing I wanna see. I wanna see Comstore sales grow and I wanna see more and more restaurants get built because more and more restaurants get built. And if you can have Comstore sales, like just in, in the end, it ends up usually turning out good for you, okay? Now, if we look at what analysts are expecting with this stock, obviously, you know, 2019 is gonna be a down year for the company. So year ago, EPS 56 cents. And now, current year 2019, they're expected to have had about 45 cents of positive EPS, okay? So obviously, that kind of warrants the stock having trouble because nobody likes to see a situation where your earnings per share went down. And that's a pretty substantial downward move from, you know, 56 cents to 45 cents. Like that is a pretty, you know, substantial move down there in EPS. So I can definitely understand why this stock has had some trouble because you don't want to see that, okay? However, remember, whenever we're getting into stock, we got to focus on the future. It's all about the future. It's all about what's happening next year and the year after and the year after, not what happened in the past years necessarily. And if you you look at this one, analysts actually expect the company to get back to growth when it comes to earnings per share. So in 2020, the company is expected to do a positive 49 cents of EPS in 2020, which would be growth from 45 cents in 2019. And so if I'm looking at that from an investor perspective, that's definitely a positive sign because you go from a company that is shrinking and everything's negative. And you know, just like the Wall Street feeling around that stock is very negative whenever they see EPS going down. But if you go from a situation where you're going down to you're going up again, it's definitely a great thing for stock in the end in that situation, okay? Now, what's interesting here is analysts actually have the company, although they have the company growing EPS, they have actually revenue shrinking. Analysts believe revenue will shrink 2.3% in 2020. And I actually don't agree with that. I actually, when I kind of looked at this business model, when I kind of thought about things and just imagine, I kind of foresee this company actually growing revenues in 2020. I actually don't see the company shrinking revenues in 2020. And one of the really bullish catalysts for, if I'm thinking about uh, restaurant sales increasing in 2020 versus 2019, a lot of it I think is honestly gonna be because of the Beyond Meat movement. Movement. We know this is something that is just sweeping America right now, the whole vegan movement and Beyond Meat and all these sorts of things. This is a big thing right now that is going on out there. And if I'm thinking about this and I'm remembering going to a Del Taco, oh my gosh, what do they have on their menu boards right there in the front of your face? Order the Beyond Meat burritos and tacos and things like that. And when I think about it from this perspective, I'm thinking about one, this is going to help them make more money because I can tell you these Beyond Meat burritos and tacos tacos are much more expensive than their traditional products they have. So the company should just make more money from these. Average check size should go up. And then the other thing I'm thinking about is, you know, imagine how many customers have been going to Del Taco over the past, you know, let's say six to nine months since Beyond Meat and Del Taco got their partnership and they've seen those menu items and they've never really been interested like, oh, that Beyond Meat, I don't know what that's about. And then all of a sudden they watch some Netflix documentary and now all of a sudden they're interested in this stuff and they're thinking about, well, where can I get fast food? And they're like, oh my gosh, I remember, remember the Del Taco? They had the Beyond Meat burrito. Man, maybe I should go try one of those. I think something like that is hugely beneficial when you can be kind of the front runner on a trend like that, whereas a lot of these restaurant chains are, are kind of slow moving. They've almost been at a standstill when it comes to having any of these type of products on their menu. And a few have tried and they got like maybe one product on their menu, whereas you have somebody like Del Taco that has several products that are Beyond Meat on their menu. And so I think that that's very interesting from a branding perspective with this whole movement and when it comes to check size in 2020 and moving forward, okay? I think there's something very important we gotta look at when it comes to Del Taco and it has to do with the wage growth tracker. And let me explain this a bit, okay? So if you're thinking about the restaurant industry, obviously the restaurant industry, you know, it kind of capitalizes on, you know, people that don't make much money. Now something I think is very important whenever you're thinking about a fast food related name, something like a Del Taco, 
was it's very important to pay attention to the wage growth tracker. I think this is very, very important to look at, okay? And I'll explain why in just a moment, okay? So if we look at the wage growth tracker, there was not much traction basically coming out of the recession for several, several years. But since around 2016, moving throughout, you know, 2020, wage growth has moved up in quite a substantial way. And whenever you get close to like full employment out there, which full employment for the United States means anything between like a three to 4% rate. Whenever you get that type of full employment out there, what ends up happening? Wage growth happens. And basically the, the employers have to pay higher and higher wages to get employees to come work for them, right? So this hurts somebody like Taco two different ways in my opinion. Two different ways this wage growth is hurting Del Taco, okay? The first way is employees end up having to make more money. So if you're thinking about the restaurant industry, right? Fast food specifically. This is an industry that obviously their workforce are usually some of the lowest paid employees out there, okay? So I mean, if the minimum wage was let's say $8.25 in a market, well guess what? The fast food workers are usually, and most of these fast food chains are usually gonna be making $8.25 or maybe you know a little bit more than that. So whether we're talking about mandatory wage increases, which some states are doing, or whether we're talking about just naturally wages continue to go up, whether you're talking about any of those situations, it's not good when you count on these type of lower paying jobs out there because you're just gonna have to pay more and more. That's the first way it hurts, so it hurts profitability. In the second way this can hurt somebody like Taco is basically if people are making more money and their wages are going up, then they're probably feeling pretty good about themselves economically. They probably have more money to spend. And so if they're thinking, hmm, I could go to Del Taco and I could spend, let's say, you know, $5 or less going to Del Taco, or maybe I go to Chipotle and I get a Chipotle burrito for $7, or maybe I go to my this other restaurant chain over here and I get a burrito for $10. When you're talking about those types of situations and a consumer, you know, what do they actually have in their wallet and what's their confidence level? Sometimes they'll trade up. So a name like Taco is hurt in two different ways because of this. They have to pay their employees more and then a lot of consumers are trading up at a particular time to you know, go somewhere else because they have more money, okay? Or order something more expensive on an Uber Eats or one of the other food delivery platforms or something like that, okay? So that is kind of a negative with the stock. So we talked about balance sheet and obviously those two negatives there. Now, if we look on a valuation basis, it starts to get a little bit intriguing. So the company has a market cap of under $300 million, $287 million as of right now. They have a price to sales ratio of 0.56 and they have a forward P on the stock of a little under 16, okay? Now that forward P under 16 is very important to look at because you want to compare it to some peers out there, which obviously these peers, much, much bigger, much more well-established companies and they probably deserve to be trading at a bit of a premium, but you look at somebody like a McDonald's trading at a forward P of 24.66 right now. You know, think about McDonald's. I mean, McDonald's is everywhere you could want a McDonald's basically, okay? There's like, you know, if you're thinking about just like who, who could grow more in the future when it comes to locations, obviously it would be Del Taco. I mean, there's a McDonald's everywhere. Starbucks. Starbucks is trading at a 25.79 forward PE right now. That is very, very rich. I mean, I can just tell you within uh, just around my house, okay, there are five Starbucks in within less than five minutes of me, which means there's a Starbucks like pretty much anywhere I could possibly ever want a Starbucks, right? And so somebody like Del Taco has definitely some expansion opportunities. So I actually think Del Taco is really intriguing from a standpoint of a turnaround play here as maybe a little bit more of a speculative play. Do I think it's a type of company that can be uh, a top three biggest investments, not in my personal opinion. There's still too many question marks around this one to count as like a top three investment. But when I kind of look at this one, I am intrigued to add this one to my portfolio as a small investment, as a turnaround play that is very, very cheap right now. So when I look at it, it's very intriguing as a spec stock, not intriguing as like a major investment. But anyways, I would love to hear your guys' opinion on this particular stock, Del Taco, in that comment section. I would love to hear from you guys if you think this is a bad stock, if you think it's intriguing from a value perspective as a possible turnaround play, and maybe this is a stock that will be $15 or $20 in the future. I would love to hear your guys' opinion down there in that comment section. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button if you enjoyed me kind of going into this, and let me know if there are any stocks you want me to do in the future on this type of series. You know, we can talk about it. Is it a buy? Let's just call it that, all right? Thank you for watching, and have a great day.